So I didn't tell her that I Man. pushed record and she was working diligently. <laughs> as as pick always. Up a child later. I'm putting it in our calendar so we don't leave My a kid. Bad, yo. They're everywhere. You know, we got four. Do you know why? She didn't even notice that the camera was on. You know why? Because she's crushing it. Hey, welcome to your Monday Midday Mobile Ministry. My name is George Schaefer. This is Meredith. You are watching, well, oh, one person. All right, now you are watching the Storm Shelter. And now I got my kid in the calendar, so I'm going to remember. I was really actually supposed to do the intro. She here. was. So I'm, I'm so gonna let her sorry. Do it now. Uh, that was a really good intro, and Thanks. I think I'm pretty much, we're pretty much done. Wow. Um, so happy to have you guys here on our Monday Midday Mobile Ministry Storm Shelter. Today we're going to talk about crushing it. Crushing it. Ugh. So last week, uh, we were not crushing it. Specifically, I wasn't crushing it. We got a lot of responses like, dude, what's wrong? What, <laughs> what happened, bro? Are you okay? Yes, I'm okay. I was super tired. Um... Man, back to back to back to back to back things going on the last couple of weeks. But, uh, man, we've got some Sabbathing going on. We've got some uh, caffeine going on. Amen. We have some Hallelujah. super exciting things going on with Storm that we're going to tell you about at the end. So stick around. Um, but today, right huh? Let's just dive right Let's in. Let's just dive right in because we're crushing it today. Man, it is... Uh, so today we're going to be talking about crushing it, and uh, man, it's so easy to focus on the sexy, warrioring parts of serving God. Those are definitely the most fun, and they're definitely the uh, my favorite to talk about. Oh yeah, uh, man, we talk about being a warrior all the time uh, here at Storm. We want to storm the gates of hell daily, uh, take ground for the kingdom, crush the enemy beneath our feet. We want to heal the sick, yeah, raise the do. dead, cast out demons and yes. cleanse lepers. Let's go. Let's wait. Not yet. Cause we're doing a live thing right now. Oh, okay. uh, we take Jesus seriously when he says, uh, be strong and courageous, rock Kazaka Mott. Uh, we want to be crushing it. For Jesus, but you know that the storm shelter can't just be super simple and talk about the sexy warrioring stuff. There's a big giant butt coming. I like big butts. But I can't. Oh, oh man. It's not the place, right? Maybe not. All right. Maybe not. Never mind. Never mind. Rewind. Oh, it's my turn. It is your turn. Uh, you know, look. We love to talk about those awesome warrior parts, but what does God really want from us? That is the question for the day. All right, so what he wants from us first and foremost is the hardest commandment. He says very specifically. Do not murder. No. Do not covet your neighbor's wife. No. Do not steal. No. Don't lie. Nope. Don't eat pork after Memorial Day. I don't think that I was think on the that's tablets. Something different. Uh, yeah, that's sorry. something different. Listen, Matthew 22, 36 through 39, he says, It is asked of him, Teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? Jesus replied, Love the Lord your mm. God mm. with all your heart, mm. with all your soul, mm. and with all your mind. Oh, come on, this he is worthy. Is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is this. Love your neighbor as yourself. That does not mean love your neighbor's wife. That's a whole other... That's a whole other thing. No. Mm -mm. no. Oh, Stay gosh. Away. All right. So it looks like we got some work to do here because if we take a step back from our warrior... Pose, warrior one. Warrior... Oh, there's not room on the screen for you. For my yoga pose? <laughs> That's not warrior oh. one. My bad. It's a good try, though. Thanks. That's really good. Uh, what? How do we do this? Within these commandments, there's actually four things that he says to do and one implied thing. You have to love your God with all your heart, soul, mind, love your neighbor as yourself. And that last one implies that you have to love yourself. Whoa. <laughs> Man, chronologically now, speaking, that's kind of genius. It's not something I really consider. Like, if I'm supposed to love somebody else... <clears throat> properly with the right amount of affection, with the right amount of care, with the right amount of empathy and sympathy, I have to show those things to myself. That's right. Oh, we're going to get there. Whoa. We're going there. All right. So number one, love the Lord your God with all of your heart. Proverbs 4.23 says, guard your heart. 
Be careful what you put in it so good things can come out. You can't put garbage in and expect goodness to come out. <laughs> nope. Sorry, it doesn't work that way. We can't love him with all of our hearts if we have things like bitterness or unforgiveness growing in there. Daily, we have to clean out our hearts and look for the weeds to pull up at the root. And furthermore, in uh, Ephesians 6, that teaches us man, that we put on the full armor of God, which goes into that sexy warrior-ness. Um, but what, what piece of armor guards that heart? It's, it's the breastplate of righteousness. Um, and there's, I mean, we can do a storm shelter just on that. Um, but righteousness, right living, biblical, um, biblical living... Uh, is one way that we can guard our hearts after we get that heart weeded out of the unforgiveness. But Exodus 23 says, you shall have no other gods before me. Going old school. Gangster. OG style. OG. So let's ask the hard questions. What are your gods or idols? Facebook and social media, we say on Facebook? <laughs> Whoops. Sorry. Oops. Facebook. We do love Facebook. And we really do. And it's super helpful for uh, us. Netflix? Oh, that's a tough one for oh, me. Oh, man. I love my Netflix at night. We do. So Friends much. or spouse or kids? Man, healthy things, right? We're charged Absolutely. with good stewardship, but we're not supposed to place them above God. Wherever you spend the most time and money has the potential to develop into an idol, so be aware. And one way that you can, you can take a look at this is print out your monthly bank statement. Find out where a majority of your money is going. Take away your necessities and find out where your majority of your money is going. And I'll show you a potential idol. Mm -hmm. Speaking of myself Combine here too. Combine that with your calendar and I think you might have something. Ooh. Man, you know what? My calendar is booked and I don't have God in there at all. Man. Might just be preaching to myself here today. So today's modern gods are subtle. Right. We have an enemy who, um, man, you know those attacks that just come directly at you at the forefront of your mind and everybody can see it? Those G.I. Joe moments where good versus evil and evil is really, really, you know, the, the good people, the good guys wear the white hats and the bad guys wear the black hats. Right. Man, I grew up and those black hats sometimes look white. Sometimes they look gray. Sometimes they look a completely different color. And it's super subtle that it creeps into your mind, right. creeps into your life. Um, they're, they're not the golden mm -hmm. calf. That's right. That was a, a graphic representation. Obvious. It's not always that obvious. Um, they can be anything that has taken God's place in your heart or thoughts or even your time. See, the enemy has crafted this strategy against us over thousands of years. Um, as a holy entity, as an angel kicked out of heaven, man, I'll tell you, the cards were stacked against us before the blood of Jesus Christ. But, um, man, so the, the enemy has been perfecting this craft, perfecting this strategy for thousands of years. And, man, the white hat versus black hat theory, man, super sexy warriorship, but not accurate every day. The, 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 the attacks can be subtle. The, the enemy can be a distraction, but we can use distraction in a positive way. Man, I thought you were going to say something totally different when you said warrior ship. Hey, a P. I've been working really hard on my cussing. <laughs> I know, and you've been doing awesome. I don't think I've dropped a bomb. Um, get thee behind me, AT&T. <laughs> Preach it. Yes, Dan Lehman, right. you are hilarious, bro. So the words you speak are an indication of the condition of your heart, which is why I don't cuss Ooh. quite as much anymore. What? Good. Matthew 12, 34 says, how can, in the, in, in the Passion Translation, if you don't have a Passion Bible, get one. If you have not downloaded that format in your version app, download it immediately and awesome. discover the passion that Jesus has for you. Uh, even more so. So Matthew 12, 34, the Passion Translation. How can your words be good and trustworthy if you are rotten within? For what has been stored up in your hearts will be heard in the overflow of your words. So, if, man, if we're gossiping and, 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 and we're spreading filth about other people, man, what an, what an indication of a rotting heart, of a, of a, of a heart condition that, uh, man... 
Uh, just it's going to require some extensive surgery, and I think today's lesson is going to help us get down to the root of that. That's right. That is right. Uh, number two, you know, in that verse we just talked about from Matthew, love the Lord your God with all your heart. Number two is with all your soul. Well, what does this even mean? How do you love God with all your soul? Well, what is your soul? A bunch of very smart people have come to the conclusion that your soul is your mind, will, and emotions. All right, so I'm not even going to fight that definition. I feel like that is a bunch of smart biblical scholars have already figured this out. They've right. gone back thanks. to the original word. All right, thanks, so guys. we're just gonna say thanks and move we're gonna on. Stand so, on the shoulder of giants. So today. yes, how on how on earth do we love God with all our soul? This goes to a deeper level than the heart because we have to love Him with our core being. Mm. All right. All that we are. Mm. Think about when you fell in love with your spouse or with your significant other. Oh, think about that. You made time for that person. You thought about them. A lot of time. All the time. I had so you much time back then. I know. We had only like half the kids that we have now. I had the yeah. half of the kids. I had I know. no kids. <laughs> Weird, right? Whoa. You had way more time. I had so much time. <laughs> and I thought I didn't have any. That's the joke right there. That is the joke. Um, so when we're falling in love, we think about that special someone all the time. We work them into our conversations with other people. We can't stop thinking about them. And we, we can't stop talking about them. Ways. Oh, the newlyweds. Oh, they're so adorable though. Man, it's the same with Jesus. You have to pursue him too. He's your treasure. He's your boo, your crush. This is what crushing it means. Whoa. Right? <laughs> that was Jesus. A, that was a little you. That was a little That's right. sharp left turn I didn't see coming. I well know. done. Thanks. You are Thanks. a lyrical gangster. That's right. Man. Like, just kidding. No. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> Still squirt bottle. Squirt bottle. Listen. Uh, when he has captured your affection, when he has captured your eye, captured your heart, captured your soul, you want to do what he wants. You become much more pliable to the idea of obedience. Obedience doesn't become a thing that you do because you have to. It becomes a thing that you do because you are so in love with the Jesus that calls you to do something that you can't help but be obedient. Man, uh, so I'm a, I'm a big fan uh, not always of the theology, but I'm a huge fan of Bill Johnson. He put it. He puts it this way: the Holy Spirit descended upon Jesus as a dove. If you ha and a dove is a, a fairly is a particularly skittish bird. So if you had a dove uh, resting on your shoulder, how are you going to walk with every step with the dove in mind? That's, that's going to be your, your intimacy level with Jesus and the Holy awesome. Spirit. When the dove descended upon Jesus, how are you going to walk with, you're going to walk uh, with every step with uh, the, the dove in mind. And that's crushing it. Amen. Man, what a great visual. Like you don't want to take a step without thinking about the don't dove. Don't jump. Don't, don't yell. Don't leap. No. Run. Walk. Walk in his presence. That's so Don't good. do anything to chase that presence away. Take every step with the dove in mind. What does God say about obedience? In 1 Samuel 15, 22, it says, But Samuel answered, What pleases the Lord more? Burnt offerings and sacrifices or obedience to his voice. It is better to obey than to sacrifice. It is better to listen to God than to offer the fat of sheep. Now, I got to tell you, a couple weeks ago, G and I were in the middle of some intense fellowship, if you will, all right? We were angry at each other, we were cranky, we don't wanna to talk to each other. And uh, God told me, apparently he talks to us a lot in the laundry room. Cause so she weird. has gotten a word in the laundry room, I've gotten a word. Massive word. God said to me, you need to bless him. I said, Lord, I don't even wanna to talk to him. Why do I need to bless him? Not and talk God to said, <laughs> I'm adorable. <laughs> you are adorable. <laughs> God said, I want you to bless him and put away all his laundry. Now, let me just tell you a little confession about our laundry room. All right. There are six people in our house. There are seven laundry baskets because George gets two. 
of clean laundry in our laundry room. And God was asking me to put away his two baskets, which had been overflowing for a while. So it really was three baskets of laundry. I don't even put away my laundry. And God was saying he wants me to put away George's laundry just to bless him. Man, you know what? I argued for a second, but I love God so much that I just did it anyway. I did not want to. (laughs) I did not. I did not want to do anything to do with laundry. And I didn't actually want to bless my husband at that time. I know. It is a confession that I'm making public here. Um, We're not always super spiritual. We're not always super Jesus-y. Not especially when we found a snake in the backyard. There was a lot of F-bombs on my side. There there was, yeah. I ain't that (laughs) saved. Oh, that was scary. Uh, You know what? Even if you don't want to or if it doesn't make sense at the time or doesn't feel good, if you are so crazy about Jesus, then you will do things for him just because he asks you to. Amen. Aggressive negotiations. I'm actually writing that down, Dan. That is Aggressive negotiations. Hilarious. We might use that. In the also. army, we used to call it um, wall-to-wall counseling. So <clears throat> the third thing that we are charged with doing is to love the Lord your God with all of your mind. Lots of verses talk about our minds. The helmet of salvation in Ephesians 6. We could take... We take Every thought captive, man, I just had a vision about this last night. We can take every thought captive in 2 Corinthians 10, 5. We have the mind of Christ in 1 Corinthians 2, 16. So how do we love God with all of our mind? We give him every thought. We take every step with a dove in mind. We choose whether or not to think the thoughts that come into our mind. Did you know that you have that ability? You, you, um, hmm. Maybe you did. Maybe you did, and maybe I'm just super slow. Totally possible. I'm a late bloomer at times. We Um, all are, man. Man, I choose to keep myself... (laughs) Damn, you're killing me, dude. That's hilarious. My hamper overfloweth. Hesitations 316. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, my gosh. That's awesome. I love that. Um, I choose to lay in bed at night thinking about... The stressors that I have, the people that I perceive that have done me wrong, uh, the considerations of the people that maybe I have done wrong. Um, But we have a choice. We do. We don't have to think every thought that falls into our brain. And we don't have to feel every emotion that comes across. We have the... (laughs) This is me not saying everything that I think. Well done. Wow. Wow. I think we're going to be aggressively negotiating after the storm shelter today. We have the ability. We have the ability to reject those thoughts that are negative, condemning, go against the word of God and filter and the filter of his word. Um, It's scientifically proven that you cannot just stop thinking a thought. You can't. Uh, Everybody who's watching 14 of y'all, man, great, great audience today. Um, The sun. Think about the sun. Now stop thinking about the sun. You can't. You actually have to replace that with another thought. Um, It's a continuous shifting of take it in or reject. And we filter that by placing it at the foot of the cross. If you find yourself in a rut circling the same negative thought or negative thing or negative thinking, someone, you know, something that someone said to you, so, um, uh, something uh, that someone did, I tell you, we have had more blessings in our ministry over the past nine months than I could possibly fathom. But let me tell you what keeps me up at night. The naysayers. The haters. The haters. The trash talkers. Uh, the ones the that said... You can't do it. You don't have enough education. Um, It's not needed. We really don't know what you're talking about. Um, The friendships that we've lost. um, It's a choice, though. It's a choice. And, and, And there is such a small fraction of haters versus the amount of people that have uplifted us. I've gotten more text messages today and Facebook 
love shown between yesterday and today than I think I ever have, but those negative thoughts will still come plaguing me at times. Mm -hmm. Then it's time to reject it and fill that empty slot with God's word. That's why we have to take every thought captive, and that's why it's so important that we memorize scripture. The only thing powerful enough to fill it up so the bad stuff can't occupy that space anymore, Matthew talks about, um, man, uh, how do you overcome a strong man uh, in his own home? A stronger man has to come in. And that stronger man is Jesus Christ through the word of God. That's good. All right, now we're getting down to the nitty gritty. All right, because number four, that verse, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. All right, we're talking about love your neighbor as yourself. Um, humility to do what God asks of us is the continuation of our affection for him. Once he has captured our heart, we can love him with our whole soul out of obedience, and we can extend that love to our neighbor as ourselves when we operate in humility. Now, mm. here is a sidebar, all right, which is just a fancy lawyer term for rabbit trail that I'm gonna really take you on. If you don't love I'm yourself. I got a fancy GED term. What is it? Basic algebra. Escrow. No. No. It's like the cloud for your finances. Good. That's such a great description. Thanks. I love it. Because I don't know what the cloud is either. Nobody knows. Nobody I knows. I mean, is it real? Is it not? I don't know. Okay. So sidebar. If you don't love yourself, now this might be because you don't yet know or believe what God says about you. This might be because you don't get your identity from him. Remember we talked about last mm, week so about important. your identity so that you important. get from God. You don't get it from other people, from yeah. your job, from your spouse, from your kids, from your successes or from your failures. If you live for the approval of others, you will die to their rejection. That is right. And on our uh, timeline for Storm and our personal page, there are 50 verses, God's word, what he says about you. Actually, there's 51. We threw 51. a bonus in there. Um, so if you don't love yourself, you can't do this part about loving your neighbor very well. That's deep. Take, right? take a second take on that. Take one second. I'm going to say take that again. Take a second on that. If you don't love yourself, you cannot love your neighbor very well because it says love your neighbor as yourself. Because you don't know what the healthy version of that looks like. That's right. And You're if gonna... you are not taking good care of yourself, if you are not loving on yourself and believing what God says about you, you are going to love your neighbor as yourself and they are going to not like you. At all. That is not the love of Jesus over here that you are showing to them because you haven't shown it to yourself first. You have to believe it. Yes. What God says about you. Yes. Now, if you need to know, again, what God says about you, remember we have those 50 verses on last week's storm shelter. So go look those up, print them out, say them out loud. It's so powerful. Man, it's so powerful. So back to humility. Uh, there are, <clears throat> excuse me, there are tons of verses about humility. Um, I wonder why. I wonder why. <laughs> um, <laughs> probably because <laughs> we screwed this humans, up. Back. a.k.a. George, Hey. Have a tendency to think, man, I've got this. Mm -hmm. I got it all figured out. That's right. We don't need this. We do. We actually might have needed that. Can you? I don't. I don't think we need that. Uh, okay. I'm pretty sure that was the old one. Right. <laughs> Maybe, or else we're done already. <laughs> so feel free to text to give at seven five nine. No, stop. Okay. Keep going. So Philippians three two through eleven. <laughs> do nothing from rivalry. Oh, don't Aww. talk to me. Stop talking to me. <laughs> <laughs> Stop writing these directly to me, <laughs> Meredith. Man, I just get a word from God. I'm sorry. You just get a word from God. <laughs> Smirky. <laughs> no, this was not directed to you. Man, that's, that's really tough, especially for guys. Oh, right? I'm competitive by nature, right? I'm naughty by nature. Hey, ho. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry, that little... <laughs> okay. Trying to swallow my tea there. Man, it's very difficult not to do anything, but man, all right, here's the word of God. I can't change it. Can Philippians 3, it? 2 through 11, do nothing. Nothing. A little uh, thing. One thing. A couple things. Mm -hmm. Do nothing from rivalry or conceit. Ah. Uh. 
but in humility count others more significant than yourselves. Oh, that's hard. Mm. I don't like oh. I don't like this mm, first. The camera. Let each of you look not only to his own interests, but also to the interests of others. Have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but made himself nothing, taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men. Man, that is painful. Jesus set the example. Hashtag be like Jesus. Hashtag Man, be like Jesus. Ben, I wish I was talking to you. Mm. Uh, what version is that? Do you remember? Uh, I will look it up. But just curious. Do nothing from rivalry or conceit. I need to check myself before I really wreck myself. Proverbs 22, 4. <clears throat> Excuse me. Proverbs 22, 4. The reward for humility and fear of the Lord is riches and honor and life. 1 Peter 5, 6. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that in the proper time he may exalt you. Now, there's a secular version uh, of that. Um, it, I'm, I'm going to jack it all up. But um, it goes like this, something like this. Uh, it's so much better to have the limelight shown on you rather than you chasing it. Um, and man, that is, that is so very true. Uh, the passion translation of that ever so famous verse, pride comes before a fall. Um, man, the passion version says something like this, that it, uh, it is a forecast of future failure. And that's terrifying, especially if you're in ministry. And man, anybody under the sound of our words today, is in ministry. We are all charged with spreading the gospel to the farthest ends of the earth. Um, and man, you want to forecast uh, failure? Um, be arrogant. Be cocky. Ho, ho, ho. Brutal. Uh, what else does God say about um, humility? First Peter 5, 5 in the ESV version says, Likewise, you who are younger, be subject to the elders. Clothe yourselves, all of you, with humility toward one another, for God opposes the proud but gives grace to the humble. Um, mm. Yeah, there's always somebody older than us. There's always somebody further along the path in either sobriety and recovery, yeah. in your spiritual life, you be younger in your than you. financial life, yeah. in your uh, raising kids or being yeah. married. You know, we've only been married. It'll be eight years in July. We need somebody who's been married a long time yeah. that we can look to and go, hey, what happened when you got to this bump in the road? Right. What did you guys do? Right. You have to have somebody who is further along. So elders can mean anything. It just means there are further than you in that particular thing. And it is good to humble yourself and ask for help. When you don't know what's going on, don't just stumble through it. Man, ask for help. Matthew 23, 12 says, whoever exalts himself will be humbled and whoever humbles himself will be exalted. And that sounds like a puzzle, but it's just simply, Some kind of weird simply riddle. true. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, so we also have Proverbs eleven twelve: 12. When pride comes, then comes disgrace. But with the humble is wisdom. Oh, that's good. Ephesians 4, 2. With all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love. Uh, Proverbs eighteen twelve: Before destruction, a man's heart is haughty, but humility comes before honor. Wow, that's a lot of verses about humility. Without trying too hard, um, in looking these up, in researching, I found like thirty. And here they are. About humility. just kidding. No, just We're kidding. not doing that again. Um, but did you catch a few of the things that come to those who are humble, who operate in humility? Boom. Just a few of the things that God offers to those who operate Boom. in humility. Wisdom, Boom. exaltation, explosions, honor, awesome, grace, riches, life. Yeah, he offers things. all of these incredible things if only you will humble yourself in every area. Humbling ourselves means really submission to what God wants for us. So it's way harder to humble yourself, but way easier in the long run. And Probably less painful if you humble yourself. So less you painful. will get humbled one way or another. Um, and we have honestly found that out the hard way. And it is much less painful if you will just humble yourself. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. 
Uh, here is the unsexy part. <laughs> We've been pretty We've been, unsexy for a yeah, while now. It's, this isn't There's about more. warrioring. This isn't about the armor of God and storming the gates of hell and showing your spiritual muscles. This is about loving people and loving those who are kind to you. That's super easy. Super easy. Right? We all love people that love us back. Yep. That is so easy. Here's the hard part. Try to love someone who doesn't love you back. Try to love someone who rejects you, betrays you steals from you, lies to you, hurts you. Lies Try you. to love someone like that. Um, Man, loving... I got an inner four-year-old saying, I don't wanna. <laughs> we Which all is do, usually man. a really good indication that I'm supposed to be doing that. <laughs> we all have that inner four-year-old. Uh, because loving the hard to love is trying, frustrating, difficult, impossible at times. But here's what I have learned about trying to love the seemingly unlovable. They are the ones who need it the most. Yes. Ah. Yes. Ah. So. Think about the last time you got in a fight with somebody that you loved. Spouse, Man. kid, friend. Did you want to love them? Did you want to fold their mad? laundry? Did you want to fold their laundry? No. I still can't even say. No, I'm just kidding. Man, uh, I, used to, I used to volunteer with this incredible organization called Life Change Ballroom. And um, one of my partners, Dennis Squires, he came to the realization that... It's the kid that um, you don't want to hug the most that needs it the most. Mm -hmm. And that was just an incredible revelation. Man, um, that's so true. Um, you know, our natural reaction is to fight back, bite back, or get them back. But that's, right. that's not God's way. That's a it's big old not, butt again. It's a big old... Big old butt. <laughs> right there. So to love our neighbor... <laughs> Replace the word neighbor. Uh, neighbor can be anybody within proximity, and there's no definition of that proximity. It could be your spouse. It could be a friend you're not speaking to, an impossible <laughs> child. We all have one of those, don't we? Uh, hard to work with boss. We all have one of those, don't Unkind coworker, cranky cashier, road raging lunatic. I've been that guy. Uh, critical mother, mean as curse word uncle. I didn't put the curse word. No, it was, it was yeah. I did put all Drunk the Drunk as lines crap, there. BFF. As ourselves, maybe we don't have to submit to God in obedience and humility to get her done. Man. I don't see any other way to love the unlovable neighbor as ourselves unless we do. When we have so much affection for Jesus, it's operating in the overflow. That's right. In our minds and our souls. So how, how do we get to that overflow? Well, we have to be so consumed, we have to be so cognizant of the dove on our shoulder that it just spills over without even trying. You have to be crushing on Jesus. You gotta be cru crushing it. That's a little weird for a guy to say, but it's I know. true. But it is true. You have to fall in love with our Jesus. And stay in love. It's it's an intentional action. It's not a feeling. Your Monday morning, which is one one of the reasons why we do the Monday midday mobile ministry. <laughs> man, Mondays sometimes Monday hard. morning, the very first thing that pops into my head is, man, I'm so in love with you, Jesus. And that's us. We have to rail against our flesh. We have to be intentional about getting in the Word and reminding ourselves of what the the, the incredible gift that He gave us on top of Golgotha over 2,000 years ago, um, th that is when we can operate in humility and obedience when we're living in the overflow and walking every step with the dove in mind. This is a whole new way of crushing it. Um, crush the enemy by developing such a deep affection for Jesus that all you can do is love God and others out of the overflow of your heart. Let me, let me reword that for, for you here. You have to be so focused. You have to be, and this is my word for 2018, you have to be so transfixed on Jesus that the distractions of the enemy and everyday life of social media and Netflix and your best friend hates you and you're, you're struggling with your weight and all these other things that come against us, man. You have, we have to be, I have to be so transfixed 
on the love of Jesus Christ that he poured out uh, through his blood over 2,000 years ago that we cannot be distracted. That being transfixed means staring at, means maintaining laser-like focus on the cross and the works of Jesus Christ and the gospel that God worked so hard uh, to develop and give to us as a gift. We have to remain transfixed and not allow any distractions of the enemy or otherwise. Uh, we can't do things the way, the world's way anymore when we operate in that kind of love. It's the love that supersedes our own. It, it, it breaks through the barriers. It was meant to flow through us like a river. It was never meant to be dammed up and only used for our, our well-being. Um, it takes over so that we can fulfill God's greatest commandments. Without his love pumping through our veins... It's impossible. This life, this ministry, the being a father, being a mother, being a friend, being an employee, being an employer, it is not possible without the love of Jesus Christ flowing through our veins. So get to know him. No, no, don't get to know of him. Don't uh, get to know what only what he's done. He is not the great I did. He is not the great I was. He is the great I am. And he is here for you today to get to know him intimately. And through that intimacy, love will overflow into your neighbor, into your job, and watch the world around you change. That's right. He doesn't want to be your acquaintance. He doesn't want to be your coworker. He doesn't want to be your Facebook friend. He wants to be your beloved. He doesn't want to follow you on Instagram. That's right. He wants to be your beloved with a capital B. You know, if he never did anything else for us, he's already done enough. Man, how many times, okay, can, if, you're, if you're married, we just had this conversation uh, between the two of us. How, how painful is it or would it be if you found out something that your spouse was going through on social media before your spouse came and told you? That's not intimacy. That's not intimacy. My wife needs to know everything about me before any of you ever find out about it. And just like Jesus, he needs to know. He wants to know. He, he, just like the song says, man, he, he couldn't picture heaven without us. That's a love and an intimacy that cannot be um, outdone. So meet him where he's at. That's good. You know, how, how do we crush it? We'd be like Jesus. Because being like Jesus is going to bring the enemy to his knees in a whole new way. Bring the enemy to his knees. Be like Jesus. Listen, we thank you guys for being here at the Storm Shelter, our Monday Midday Mobile Ministry. You I got guess. it. Nice. And if you are blessed by this ministry in some way and want to contribute, uh, we need your time. We need your prayers. You can volunteer on our Storm uh, website, and you can also donate. So if you go to storminc.org, S-T-O-R-M-I-N-C.org, you get all the latest news, information, ways to buy the storm gear, um, ways to sign up to volunteer. You can give. We also have a text to give number, 405-759-8999. And also, uh, a new feature on our website, uh, we now have a weekly e-newsletter that us. goes out every Monday morning. Way to and go. It's got, Thanks to this guy. Well. But it's got um, in-depth information, things that we're up to, um, behind the scenes, uh, goings on of storm chasers, of storm. Uh, we have a lot coming up. We have a lot coming up. So man, get on that website, uh, storminc.org, and sign up for our newsletter. It'll be a little pop-up. Enable your pop-ups. It'll be a pop-up immediately when you get on. Uh, just input your email address. I'll make sure that you get our newsletter. There are some really exciting things coming up because, I tell ya. because, believe it or not, we are coming up on our one year anniversary at Storm. How is that even um, possible? I don't know, but there's a lot in the works uh, for that. Um, so, I man, be looking for some pretty incredible new gear, new swag. Um, that's right. Maybe keep even coming back. a new. I can't tell you. I don't even know what he said. Oh. And it has to do with the storm shelter. That's right. So, Thanks get out of here, here, finish your lunch, go back and. Uh, Love man, you guys. Spend some time in the Word before you go back to work. That's right. Let the overflow of Jesus, man, just flow through your environment wherever you're at, whether you're at home or you're at work or you're preparing to go to work or you don't even work at all. No judgment here. Um, I'm Develop retired. Develop your crush.
Develop your crush. That's right. Develop your crush. We love, love you guys. guys. Mwah.